re-educate them. So it actually uses the word re-education, which you know is a Soviet term. Why would they so nakedly talk about things like this if they weren't getting ready to green light it? Yeah, well, and if you notice in the material that they're passing out, Alex, for, <clears throat> for these Muslims that they're bringing in from Syria, you'll notice in all their literature, they're saying you're not to assimilate. You're to grow. Now, what does that mean? They don't want them to assimilate into our culture. They want to grow. They want their culture to grow and eventually take over ours. Guys, I'm telling you, Alex, we've got a serious problem. This is this is not a, you know, it's scary. Let's all get together and scare each other. This is the truth. No, no. I, I mean, I used truth. to hear this from Glenn Beck like five, six years ago and others, and I would roll my eyes or, or you know, yeah. live in. But – I see the literature. I see what the government's doing. They want us all fighting with each other. And what's yep. a better way to bring in foreign groups, fill them full of hate of America, and then give them a bunch of free welfare? I mean, it's certainly going on. It, it is indeed. And, Alex, the front line's going to be here with us. You know, one of the things I promise you, I will get involved in that story with uh, the ISIS car dealers. Don't worry, I will get in there, and I don't care what it costs me and what it involves, but I will get to the truth of that. The problem is, who do you call? Let me ask you, Alex, let's say you found in your neighborhood, in your community, let's say you found a car from a, from a rich, wealthy car dealer, and in it was the war flag for ISIS. Who would you call? Well, I would shoot video of it and then do an undercover report showing, and then I would confront the person asking, hey, what's this? So it couldn't be denied, I'd put it on YouTube. Well, that may be what we end up doing with this, because that may be the only thing we can do, because we certainly can't go to the government. The government's not going to do a thing about it. But I will provide that for you, Alex. I'll get that for you. That's, it's going to be a little risky, a little dangerous, but they're here now. They're here now, and then bringing in 85,000 more of them, that is absolutely insane. Well, we know that most of the so-called Syrian refugees are Wahhabist out of other countries. Wah up, right. Upwards of 85% are men, and they're, they are, ISIS said six months ago, we'll infiltrate Europe and the U.S. with a 500,000-person immigrant wave. It's actually been much bigger than that. They're saying that's what they, uh, most of them, Two out of three have fake passports. It is military-age men coming in. And so if they do attack or they're ordered to attack by the globalist, they will then use that as a pretext to take over. Absolutely. And, you know, this weekend they caught, what, six of them carrying in smuggling low-grade uh, uh, uranium. They call them smuggling low-grade well, Are you racist uranium. against that? I mean... I mean, it's, oh, gosh, it's, I don't know. I'm sorry. I just thought that might just blow us up and make a dirty bomb. I'm telling you, these people are coming to kill us. And what upset you? Stay me, there. Alex, stay right there. We'll be back. StageRights.video is where you can find the new film that Larry Nichols is in, breaking down a, a way to take the country back via the states. I wrote an article that Drudge linked to that went real viral, and I was proud of the fact a lot of constitutional lawyers came on the broadcast and said, no, we've read your plan. It's actually what the founders talked about uh, in the decade after the country was founded because the country almost broke up a few times then that, that they could just have the states, if the feds got out of control, pull out of the federal government and then reconstitute the federal government once it was back under control. So I'm not saying secede in Texas to become our own republic. I'm saying we need states to secede and go, look, we're seceding from an illegitimate occupied federal government run by foreign interests that's openly funding ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusra, all the same group out of Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia had denied that they were behind ISIS until the Russians started bombing them. And now Saudi Arabian government says, we're getting ready to attack the Russians. Now, Nichols you know, says he talks to Netanyahu, and I, and I believe him, he talks to a lot of people. Uh, and I know Israel claims they're fighting Al-Qaeda, but they've actually been backing rebels that are in uh, the southern area of Syria, bordering the Golan Heights. They can argue, well, those are non-radicals, but our Pentagon says, no, they're the same people. So uh, it seems like the whole West is lined up to do this, and the world now knows about it. Larry Nichols, in the time we have left, the next 10 minutes or so, then we're going to go to break and come back with an investigative journalist who works for Infowars.com, Wayne Madsen. Biden is saying he better start getting his hat in the ring or he'll just end up being Secretary of State. That was a quote today, a joke, a jive at Hillary. Obviously, 
from your sources, do you think Biden will run? You said if he does, clearly that's uh, Obama going after Hillary. You were the first person I said, I heard say that Obama was going after Hillary months ago. Now they admit that's happening. She's come out and, quote, flip-flopped to oppose Obama trade, the TPP that her and her husband helped ram through. Clinton moves left, opposes Obama's Pacific trade deal, making it leftist to be against trade. No, it's a secret global compact. So she's doing a lot of that. Uh, what do you make of that? And then how big a deal is it that uh, the Republicans just shot down Boehner's uh, aide-de-camp, his successor? Well, that... That is a big deal because, as you know, Boehner and the boys, the hierarchy, have run run the Republicans into the ground. Alex, here's where we are. Here's where we are, and don't doubt it one second. Obama is getting in. This is Obama's time. He sees it. He's taking it. He's going to use Boehner. I mean, he's going to use Biden simply to buy him the movements that he needs to negate Hillary. But the object is to negate Hillary. Remember, there's nothing in those documents, those Secret Service memos that can hurt Hillary one bit. Everybody's going, oh, my God. Well, why did Hillary bring them out? Because they know, Alex, that if they were ever brought to court over those documents, Hillary would say, well, I've got to have the documents to defend myself. And the judge would say, well, you can't because those are classified and top secret. So they can't be used. She can't be prosecuted on. It. That's nothing. But Obama bringing the FBI in, that's something. He's going after Hillary, and he's going after Hillary to strip her power. Now, here's what I'm going to do. If you, if you if you got enough guts to do it, I'm going to get that video of that car dealer. I ain't got that much time anyway, but they're going to come after you. I'll get you that video of the car dealer with the ISIS flag. But we've got to do something to show the people that they are here, and they're here in very precarious situations. Do you realize how much money a car dealership selling used cars can float around? I mean, millions and millions of dollars cash that they can move around all over this country. And then I will bring you evidence of Sharpton going and paying hired activists in major cities. Let's see how he explains his ass out of that one. That's what we got to well, do. Well, we know That's Sharpton's been doing him. that before, and we know Soros know spent $33 million just in one town to stir it up. I mean, that's pretty much admitted. But, yeah, you say you've got him red-handed doing it right now? Red-handed doing it now, and I got something else. I got both parties, RNC and the DNC. They're setting up rooms right now. They call them war rooms, and what they're doing is they're lining up all the illegal Mexicans that are going to have driver's license, and they're setting up absentee voting companies for them. Well, that's admitted that both parties are engaged in that. It is just absolutely ridiculous. Well, uh, you see what that does? That makes us irrelevant. That makes us irrelevant. They can literally bring in 30, 40 million new people, and we become irrelevant. Unless we stop it. And the way to stop it, I hate to say it, there's only one way to stop it. One governor can say to the federal government when a federal black robe mob judge says something to him, he just says, hey, I'm not coming to your court. I'm not coming to your court. You or I can't. They'll put us in jail, but they can't put a governor in jail. Well, I know this. I remember, was it Lubbock or was it Midland? where the uh, county judge, who's, who's the elected city council person for the county, we just call that that in Texas, county judge, came out and said, well, I've been told they're getting ready for martial law at the end of Obama's next election. This was during the election a few years ago, and they're going to be coming for the guns, and we've got to have armored vehicles to fight the feds and the U.N., and people thought that was pretty crazy. But I tell you, there are times in history when armies line up, when finances line up, when the stars align, when more happens than has ever happened before. Uh, yeah, there it is in the New York Times. Official yep. stirs Texas City with talk of rebellion, Lubbock, Texas. And, and, and Alex, we're not asking a state to succeed. A state doesn't have to succeed. All a state has to do is reclaim its power. Our founding fathers gave us the answer to today. They were smart enough. They gave us the answer. You knew it back years ago. They gave us the answer. I talked to a Supreme Court justice. He says it stands. 
we have the answer. A state can say no. And when one state says no, I bet you a bunch of states will say Again, no. Larry Nichols is our guest. He really does talk to the people he says he talks to. I know that I've been interviewing him for about 19 and a half years. I mean, I've been on air maybe seven, eight months when I first interviewed him. That is on radio. But, I mean, I had Matt Drudge in here. He told me who it was face-to-face, -face, what Supreme Court justice, even more of what he said off record. Uh, but here in studio, it made national news. He said no face-to-face. He told me, and he wouldn't believe whose house it was at, uh, that they're going to shut down talk radio, internet, everything. Right. That they intend to do it, and they intend to take over. And the Supreme Court justices have been told, you better sit down and go along with it. I mean, what do you think it means when Matt Drudge, the biggest guy in media when it comes down to one person, is at my office? I mean, can you imagine the meeting, the three-hour meeting we had? I mean, people, this is real. Uh, that's all I can tell folks. It's real, and remember, I helped Clarence Thomas with his little problem with a knee to heel. So, well, don't say who it. You're, you just know. Well, I'm just that. saying I helped him, and <laughs> you know, I'm just telling you guys this. This is not a scare tactic. This is real. You know, Alex, they got to shut down this internet. They've got to shut it down. You know it, and I know it, and they've got to take Drudge out. And I'm sure that was part of the conversation you and. And uh, Matt Hat, and I'm sure Matt told you how he got the story from me about Linda, uh, when he, uh, Monica Lewinsky. Did he t share that with well, you? Well, we'd gone into a lot of stuff, but I uh, can't get into a lot of it. I mean, as you know, uh, all I'm saying is we are at a critical time in history right now. We are. If you'll help me, I swear. If we'll get the people to help us, this is, this is God's country. This is for everyone listening. It's not a fight for Alex Jones or Larry Nichols or Matt Drudge or somebody else. It's for all of us. You know, Alex, you think about all the people that got off those boats D-Day. Do you think they got off those boats for us to become this? I don't think so. I think they'd have stayed on the boat and said, hey, let's go someplace else. It's our turn. Let's stand up. Let's be Americans. Let's act like Americans. And let's take this country back. We can we can do it. Well, there's no doubt the move is being made to break the country up right now in the strategy of division that you talked about. Uh, the broken, uh, what's the exact name? Broken coalition. The broken coalition strategy, the divide and conquer, and that is exactly what's happening. And, you know, you say prop Hillary up not to even help her, but just because that's what Obama doesn't want. Clearly, he's going after her. And what a quandary, what a paradox, because I can't stand Hillary. <laughs> but you can see Obama getting ready to take her down. I mean, how could we even help Hillary against Obama? By having a state stand up and declare that the federal government's burning out of control and we're not going to take it anymore. That stops it all. That stops it all right there. Do you it think really Hillary, does. though, if she gets the nomination, would win? No, I'll stop that. I promise you this. Hillary will not be president of the United States. I'll stop her, and you know I will. But the bad news is I can't let Obama take her out because if he takes her out, then I can't stop a caliphate. The Muslims will kill you. Hey, folks, let me tell you something. In case you're wondering, there is no such thing as a tame Muslim. There's not. At some point, Alex, every follower of Islam is going to come to where the rivers divide. And they got to either go to the Tigris or the Euphrates. And that means they either got to do what Allah says or go to Allah heaven or hell. I mean, it's that serious. I well, mean, I, mean, I got to say that ra radical Islam is taking over a lot of Muslim countries. Our government's funding it to create a clash of civilizations. But a lot of Muslims don't like the more oppressive sides of it, That's just right. like in Christianity or anything. And, and I get what you're That's saying. Right. You wouldn't call them, you know, a, a, a radical Muslim. But I, certainly, certainly I didn't buy into this uh, theory five years ago. Now, whatever it is, it's bad. And we shouldn't have to pay for all this. And it's very dangerous. <laughs> And the globalists are going for broke. Thank you so much for the time, Larry. Get some rest. Don't take any more vaccines. And we look forward to talking to you again. I'll call you today when I get off the air, okay? And next week, I will have you that video. All right.